Hello. Today we're looking at Kevin Can F Himself, Season 2, Episode 7. So this episode starts with a trio of fairly quick scenes. We start with Neil, who, as you guys know, is becoming my favorite character, trying to tell people what he's endured and what is going on. We have Allison, who is trying to convince her husband Kevin to do all sorts of nasty things to Patty's girlfriend, who's a cop, in order to get Patty's girlfriend to stop investigating Allison. And then Allison is admitting this to Sam, her boyfriend, and Sam is pretty disappointed in her that she's sitting here trying to sabotage Patty's life and to get um, Tammy into all sorts of trouble, the cop, because she wants to stay. And we've had two entire seasons now of Allison knowing that she's going to be in serious trouble. There's all this evidence against her. The guy that was a thief could easily wake up from his coma. And now somehow she's in this delusional state where she thinks, well, maybe if I just get rid of um, Tammy, that all my problems will go away and I can stay and live in this life, which I used to hate so much I was going to kill my husband. But now I think it's not so bad because I can try to manipulate him, even though clearly he's doing all the same stupid stuff that he's always done. So this whole twist doesn't make sense to me, and it just makes me even further not appreciate this main character at all, which disappoints me. And the next scene we have is a segment with Allison and Neil going to the hockey arena. And after all of Allison's being self-centered and selfish and destroying other people's lives so that she can have her own life, which isn't even a happy life, um, Neil is the only one in all of this who seems to be trying to help other people. He is right now uh, going in and trying to plead so that Patty, his sister, can get back into the ice skating rink because he screwed everything up the last time that they were there together for his birthday. So he's been doing his best to hold things together after <laughs> being uh, attacked brutally and held hostage and having brain damage and all the rest of that kind of stuff. So uh, this is just showing where the ice rink is to show that it's far away from Worcester. But I just want to say here that here we are nearly at the end of the entire storyline. And I really wanted to connect with Allison and support her and the battered woman situation that she's in. And I am just more and more disappointed with the way they're portraying her and also the actress's take on her. And you have to wonder how much of that is the actress and how much is the director and all of that. But you know, there's no way to pick it out with, at that level of detail. You can just say that I was unhappy with the end result as what's being presented here. If anything, I am more caring about Neil's story and what he's going through. And even Patty, who had some good moments in there, and the end when Neil got trapped in jail, Patty said, well, just let him sit there for a weekend. The poor guy has brain damage caused by Patty. And now she's just abandoning him and letting him sit in jail for a weekend. And, you know, he would have sat there if it hadn't been for Diane that got him out. So um, I'm just still not happy with the series, but let's see what happens next. Let's contrast that with the situation that Diane, the aunt, is in. You know, Diane says she chose to be with Chuck, her current husband, who she dislikes immensely. And then things happened and she tried to get away from Chuck and she found she couldn't. And she went back to him, even though he is hostile and abusive and all that other kind of stuff. And she says that she doesn't know if she loves Neil, but maybe she just doesn't want to be alone. And maybe there's not always a difference. Now, clearly, <laughs> this is a point of view I strongly disagree with. And I also understand how people get into this mindset that, well, I don't really care about him, but it sucks being alone and it's so much easier to have someone to spend time with and to be able to talk to and to, you know, cover for things if you get sick and all that other kind of stuff. But I also think that it's a bit um, uh, self-sheltering herself by saying this because it's not like she dislikes Neil. She's very happy around Neil. The scenes that we have with her and Neil, they're laughing and joking and enjoying each other. I think they really get along with each other and they could be a good couple. So I think part of why she's saying this is that she's still, you know, clearly she's married. So she's still in turmoil about, well, how would she even get away with Chuck? Chuck is violent and all that other kind of stuff. So while she is saying this, 
and is maybe trying to convince herself that's true, I think that her relationship is more complicated than that. And then we have this scene with Allison and Neil. And again, it just reminds me of why I'm so fond of the Neil character and why I am so unhappy with the Allison character. Allison's actively trying to sabotage Patty's life and relationship so that Allison can stay in this situation when clearly it wouldn't even work properly. So she's, in essence, sabotaging Patty for no reason at all. And in the meantime, Neil, who has been attacked, kidnapped, brain damaged, is trying to help his sister out because he still cares about her. And he is uh, going through some lengths to try to make things better for Patty, even in a small way. So, you know, Neil is doing his best to help the people around him, despite everything he's gone through. And Allison is just doing her best to destroy the people around her and to take advantage of them because she is unhappy. And now she's not even unhappy enough to leave. So... Uh, this is all still frustrating to me, I suppose. So at last, Tammy, the girlfriend, is confronting Patty and saying, in essence, I know that you're involved in all of this. Let me know how I can help. I really want to help you. And she puts Patty pretty much on the spot and says, you need to make a decision right now. Are you going to tell me what's going on or are you going to keep hiding? And Patty doesn't say no. And she doesn't say yes. You know, this is all just sort of blindsiding her. And in essence, Tammy walks off and says, well, I'm sorry, good luck on your own. So I understand that Patty is trapped and is confused about what to do. But also, they have had so much time to think about this and all the permutations. She should have been prepared for, what do I do when my cop girlfriend figures this out? What, you know, which path am I going to take? Instead of just assuming, well, she's never going to find out, even though she's this great investigative detective and she's solved all sorts of other cases. So I appreciate her saying, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I appreciate the cop saying, well, you know, you're going to have to decide something at some point. But it's, uh, again, it stretches disbelief a little bit that she hits this point and says, wow, I've never thought about this issue before. And then we spend time on this whole scene about Deftos beer and how severed fingers were found in it. And I don't know why they have any of these types of scenes in this anymore. There's no reason to have silly sitcom scenes in here when they're not serving the plot in any way and they are not funny at all. It just is completely baffling. You know, we are nearly at the end of the entire show. And by this point, we have established that Kevin is a stupid character. And if they're going to put in those kinds of scenes, at least they should serve the plot line in some sort of way. And this is odd. Kevin has left the room, so normally we're now in her real world, but we're still in the sitcom world. The sitcom world is now bled over into her real world, where her real world is like a sitcom, and it's only when she finally puts the piece of paper down that the scene goes into the dark, more realistic things. Maybe this is meaning that her own world is now a sitcom. You know, I've been saying that all along, that it seems like there's all sorts of silly sitcom-y aspects to her world, and is it really that much different than his world? You could say that his world is a focus on the stupid things he's doing, but her world is pretty much a focus on the stupid things that he's doing and the stupid things that she's doing. So everything is getting all mingled together, I suppose, and maybe they were trying to show that with this scene and the way they cut it. And then we have, we'll say, the turning point moment where Patty is crying and saying, everything is a mess, I'm sorry, I can't fix anything. And Allison has a moment of realization and says, you know, we used to be at the point where we weren't friends at all at the beginning of this entire season. And now we're at the point where you are crying and I know this is my fault and I have to do something to make this better. So I appreciate that they have gone in the two years from them having this very hands-off, hostile relationship to now being a caring relationship. But you also have to remember that it was just a few hours ago that Allison was actively plotting to destroy Patty's life. So this instant change, just because Patty is now sad, feels a little uh, rushed or forced or something like that. So now we have Allison up in Maine starting her new life. We have the news that her family hears that she's been lost or missing in a hiking accident and that she's left a farewell note for Patty. But through all of this, they make it seem like poor Allison is the victim here and that she is making a huge sacrifice. When this is what Allison has wanted the entire time and she has destroyed everyone around her life in order to get it. So 
I am just not feeling a lot of sympathy for Allison having arrived in her destination she wanted to get to. So we'll see how this last episode plays out. 